Hello and welcome to South Asia Focus. I'm Smita Prakash. The shooting in the Canadian Parliament premises in Ottawa has sent shockwaves across the world. It's a grim reminder to the 2001 terror attack on the Indian Parliament. How prepared is South Asia for such attacks? To discuss this, we have with us security expert Kamar Agha. But first, we have a brief report on two terror incidents, the Ottawa Parliament attack and the New York loan attacker incident. Here it is. Firing more than 30 shots in the halls. A gunman shot and fatally wounded a soldier before being killed by police in Ottawa and even entered the Canadian Parliament buildings being chased by police in a dramatic scene on October 22nd. Ottawa police later confirmed the death of the gunman, identified as Michael Zehaf, a 32-year-old man who had recently converted to Islam. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper was in a meeting in Parliament when gunfire erupted in the building. It's important to note that Nobel Peace Prize winner Malala Yousafzai was also supposed to meet Mr. Harper later in the day, which was cancelled as well. In what could be seen as a related incident, a lone wolf attacker, Zale Thompson, went on a hacking rage in New York, injuring four policemen on October 24th. Thompson, a former Navy man, had been making provocative comments and praising jihad on social media. Police, though, have not yet found any formal links with terrorist groups and have described him as just an angry guy. However, uh, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, you were recently in Canada. Uh, one had assumed that Canada has not yet seen a spillover of uh, terror attacks which have taken place in the US, which have taken place in Europe and in Asia. What happened there? And uh, do you think it is a spillover of terrorism which is occurring in these parts of the world? I think it's a spillover, you know. Next door is America. They're very close, closely, you know, both the countries are linked together, mm. you know. And uh, the large number of Muslim communities coming from different uh, regions are staying there. And as it is, you know, 130 people have joined ISIS from mm -hmm. Canada. So th the movement was going on, you know, but th then in nine, 2008... The movement, you mean? Uh, the the radical, terror, movement, radical, radical movement was very okay. uh, quite strong there. Has know. the Muslim community in Canada integrated with everybody else? Is it, uh, is it isolated? Uh, are there problems between the Muslim community and the rest of uh, Canada? Is there you know, is the same problem. a dissatisfaction you, in the community? There is certain elements within the Muslim community are dissatisfied, you know, they're radicalized, you know, and radicalization is not a very difficult thing these days. Hmm. So much material is available in the website and on the fatwas have been issued that individual jihadis they are trying to make people like this one you know geographical borders political borders it doesn't matter it anymore. doesn't matter anymore you know there are uh, hundreds of uh, people you know have radicalized in the last t five years or ten years in canada you know out of them 130 had gone to fight in syria with isa you know, Another whenever such attacks take place, most countries think back and say, what have we done wrong that our people would do this to us? You know, it's not as if a Canadian has gone and attacked another country or a Canadian terrorist has gone and attacked another country. The Canadian terrorist has attacked a, on Canada's soil, has attacked a Canadian asset. So, you know, most countries would tend to think we must have done something wrong that we are unable to integrate our own people. Is that right to feel that sense of guilt? You know, large majority of the Canadian are very peace-loving people, like any other country, you know, especially in a highly developed society. People are very modern, very caring, you know, but it's a small section, you know, of the society. Second thing, you know, ever since Canada, especially this conservative government, Stephen Harper, has announced that Canada would join the U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. And before that, Canada was part of the... Um, group, you know, which was fighting against the uh, militant in Afghanistan, you know, the mi militant movement also started surfacing in Canada. So in 2008, we have seen the incident, Al-Qaeda incident, you know, some people, you know, wanted to bomb different cities, you know, especially Toronto. The person, you know, Mizbah uh, Abdul Hamid was just a few days back, just a few months back, you know, was charged uh, with uh, 
these uh, uh, crimes, you know. So there are reports which were coming. Car Canada has not committed any mistakes. Not not the people. Large number of Muslim community are are integrated in the, trying to integrate with the within the Canadian system. They have accepted. They are living. In fact, this fellow. Uh, was barred from one of the mosques, you know, he was not allowed to enter into the, one of the mosques where he used to go for prayer, you know, because they found him too radical. Then he was a drug addict also. So but there were a lot you know, of reports, um, you know. If I was to interrupt, uh, this, uh, there are many who are seeing parallels between uh, the attack on the Indian parliament in 2001 and uh, what happened in Canada and say that countries have not learnt from similar attacks. I mean, India built up its security system. There are several barriers before you can get to the parliament house. It's not easy. But here, uh, Canada, it was very easy for the man to just walk in. Into it's that. a open soci society. It's, I mean, there are no restriction. You can just walk in. In fact, thousands of tourists you would find roaming around this building, you know, especially and the monuments are there, then the parliament building. These are very well, very beautiful. Uh, place you know where where this uh, uh, Parliament Hill is located. So uh, uh, no restriction at all. You know, just walk in. So that age of innocence is over then after this attack. It seems. Isn't it? No, no, it's over. You know. Then second thing, you know, uh, they they said that they would increase surveillance. They would increase other measures. You know, take like Patriot Act of America. You know, they'll try to have some learn from them also intelligence. But Smita, it's not sufficient to stop it. Hmm. Because they keep coming, you know. There are sanctuaries where they get training. I'm not talking about this incident where they get training, where they get equipment, where they get money, you know, like Pakistan, you know, uh, and, uh, the, uh, and other countries in the region of Afghanistan. So you're saying that unless these Un incubators are hit and unless it stops from there? You see, unless and until pressure is being built on Pakistani army, which is supporting them, you know, it will not stop at all, you know, because that's the place. If you if you see any terrorists, you know you would find uh, have linkages in Pakistan. Now Pakistani based militant organization are calling for individual jihad. You don't have to take training. You know training manual is available on website. You just learn it how to make a bomb and just go. Oh, well, this reminds These me are of individual, the, uh, uh, the uh, incident that happened in New York last week, uh, where a single person went and he uh, he took an axe and attacked randomly attacked policemen. Now they're saying that this is probably an act of uh, of a lone wolf of a single person who self radicalized. Now imagine that in in a country like India, you know, where somebody just goes a single person. How do you get intelligence? How do you stop a person from get, getting self-radicalized? It's very, very difficult for any country to stop. We have witnessed similar thing happening in Great Britain, in London, where, where a policeman was hacked mm. by one of the uh, Muslim militant, Correct. you know. He was also not part of any organization. Where a single woman went up to him and... Uh, uh, yes, talked to... Brave girl. Brave who girl, he, very brave just girl. just went yeah. ahead and spoke Similar, to Similar, you know, we have seen what has happened in uh, New York, which you were mentioning. Before that, you know, the, the pressure cooker bomber, we have seen, you know, they are not part of any organized group, you know, and they are mm. not affiliated. They have not gone to Afghanistan or Pakistan for training, you know, mm. because they were just, you know, fatwas were issues, how you should... Organize yourself, you know, how to make a bomb, all these things are available. So, in there the are two ways. One, what you're saying is that uh, international pressure needs to be built on uh, countries which are promoting terrorism. Then, there is also the question of uh, stopping their money supplies, right? So that also is a way. But then, how does one, you cannot police the internet. What happens to that? That's where they're getting self radicalized, isn't it? These people are not even traveling to Pakistan or Afghanistan or Yemen, Sudan. They're not traveling there to the terror camps for getting training. They're getting self radicalized, making the bombs sitting at home. And don't even need to make bombs. Now they're just taking an axe and attacking. Yeah, you see, Smita, what is happening, you know, the base is Pakistan. Where these uh, ideologue of uh, militancy are sitting there, you know, where the fatwas are being issued to them, where the, who are these are the people who are, you know, um, uh, managing these websites, you know, that has to be stopped. And the second thing, these are the, these are not ordinary people, you know, they have the support of intelligence agency ISI, you know, which is a very powerful organization. And if the if the militant organization backed by a state agency 
then it becomes very lethal. This is what happening with Al Qaeda. This is what happening with other militant group like ISS. You know, they receive funding, money, weapon from uh, many countries in the Gulf. You know, so it's very difficult unless and until you put pressure on these countries like uh, uh, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, or I don't want to name there are many other uh, countries in the region. They are using for their own vested interest these militant groups, and then they turn against them also at time we have seen you know so how do you prevent uh, such an act like what happened in canada how or what happened in new york uh, two separate incidents one is attacking a symbol of democracy and the other one is attacking yet another symbol which is law enforcement agency you know the both of them were single individuals so the focus so far in south asia has been on on curbing the activities of terror groups, terror modules. How do you stop lone individuals? You see, as far as um, Canada is concerned, they are capable of doing that. They have suppressed the very powerful Quebec uh, National Liberation Movement. And they have also suppressed the Sikh terrorism, you know, uh, mm. 85 when they bombed the mm. uh, Air India plane, you know. They have arrested all those people, you know, eradicated the almost, you know, the the Sikh militancy within the Kenya. I'm sure they'll manage it, you know. No, th there is not a very and big how does Muslim. South Asia, deal with South it? Asia is difficult, you know, mm -hmm. because now, you know, the problem is increasing in South Asia. Uh, number one, because uh, uh, recently they have also, you know, announced the formation of uh, Al Qaeda in South Asia. South you Asia know. They have uh, sleeper cells in spreading all over the country, you know, not only in India, but Bangladesh and many other countries where these militant organizations are opening, operating openly. Third thing, you know, the failed state, Bangladesh, Nepal. Uh, there are many other, other countries, you know, which uh, or Sri Lanka itself, you know, where they have a big sanctuaries or Myanmar, you know, where, they, where they, not only Muslim Islamic militant op groups but other militant organizations are also operating. It's a very difficult task, you know. I think there is a need for better coordination uh, among the countries. You so know. there should be a regional cooperation there as for uh, tackling terror uh, terror attacks of the nature that happened in. Uh, in uh, Canada and in New York? Uh, yeah, there should be, you know, Canada and New York, not only Canada and New York, you know, it's a global problem, you know, mm -hmm. we all have to uh, cooperate, you know, at, at the South Asia level, then we have to have co coordination with South Asia, with Central Asia and the global level, you know, the government of India is, ex we have some program under which, you know, information are being exchanged between the various uh, intelligence organizations. Do you see the, uh, the, the threat of ISIS ex you know, expanding, uh, putting across its tentacles in South Asia uh, in, a, in a more sustained manner in the weeks to come? Yes, uh, it is already. You see what is happening? Already many established organization in India, Pakistan, you know, and now, you know, uh, they are accepting or going uh, the ISS way, they, 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 they have uh, shown their allegiance towards the ISS. They, they, overnight they have shifted. So they have got a ready-made base here, you know. What I am expecting is a big trouble is going to come in Pakistan and Afghanistan also, where you would see in the days or coming months, you know, the fight within the militant organization and then they will be fighting. This will be spill over to other places also, you know. So the intra uh, militant fight is also expected because Al Qaeda is virtually splitted, and the many Al uh, Taliban groups are now, uh, you know, have gone towards uh, ISIS. So, this intra militant fights that you expect in Afghanistan and Pakistan, will there be a spillover into India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka? Of course, you know, the, that is why they have immediately, Al Qaeda become very weak in the Arab world. So, they immediately announced, you know, they wanted to establish their hegemony, you know, they said, okay, look, we have formed in South Asia. And I'm very, you know, um, worried about it. You know, they may conduct some of the operation in India, Bangladesh, or sorry, Lanka, or, the, or Myanmar. You know, it's not very difficult for them. You because know. the videos in the videos, there's a person who says that uh, why is in blood flowed. Uh, in in Uttar Pradesh, which is a central Indian province, uh, why haven't why hasn't Myanmar reacted? Well, you know, so there is there is a uh, the videos show 
you know that they want Indian uh, sleeper cells to be activated. I, I, I think so. You know, it was a very deliberate attempt, and they must be planning. But one one thing, you know, the Indian agencies are very well equipped to handle these situation, and uh, we have the experience in the past also. We have. Uh, many such attempts with how it is. But it's still, you know, it's very difficult because we have a free society, um, democracy is very deep-rooted. We don't want police bandobas Which all around us. Which also makes us sitting yes, ducks. Uh, sitting ducks, you know. So it becomes difficult for the agencies to operate also. But, but nevertheless, you know. Um, uh, to what extent uh, can or should liberties be, uh, be curtailed in order to for security to be increased. I mean, this is something which is every country has its threshold. Uh, to what extent can India go forward? I mean, I know that in, in Bangladesh, uh, you know, literally some areas are no-go zones. It doesn't happen like that in India. No, I think there are already moved, demands were there, you know, to, to, to have new laws, you know. We, earlier we used to have POTA, POTA was gone, you know, the other brought in. Now, you know, I think they will take up, you know, the, the additional laws or additional, uh, I think, uh, very soon we will have that. You Mechanisms know. to? Mechanism to contain militancy, mechanism to deal with the militant or these type of organizations or cells or individuals, you know. But it's still, individual jihadi is difficult to handle. You difficult know, for to anybody. Control. If someone decides, you know, he wants to die, how do you go? Uh, to deal with him, you know, it's yeah. very difficult. Thank you very much for speaking with us.